Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, yes. Hi. I can hear you. Hmm. Give me a second. Okay. Um. Again, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Yes, Thank yes, you. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't before, so that's why I'm asking you. Okay, but uh, thank you for uh, confirming that. Um, it's time to begin. So just let me go full screen here with you. And uh, I'm going to share the screen with you now. Um, here we go. There it is. Okay, just going to open this. And I'm going to get a bit more further away from the screen so I can see you better. All right, um, everybody, I hope you have uh, enjoyed your weekend. It's time for us to have our class. But first things first, I have to call your names from the attendance list. So uh, when you hear your name, please let me know you're here so I can take your attendance today. First one, Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Present teacher. Welcome, Ana Cecilia. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome, Byron. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Cristina Abigail. Present teacher. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Uh, Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Present. Welcome. Damaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Welcome. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Nope. Elisa Arely López Campos. Present teacher. Welcome. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Present teacher. Welcome. Um, Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Present teacher. Welcome. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. I'm here. Welcome. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Miguel. Present, sir. Okay, welcome. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present. Welcome. Sandra Yanet Vázquez Cortés. Good evening, I'm here. Welcome. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Present, teacher. Welcome. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Okay. All right, let's begin. Everybody, welcome. This is Advanced English 1. And uh, this is me, Ivan Donyang, at your service. This is session number 9 out of 16. And today is September the 11th of 2023. September 11th. This is a, a historical date. Okay, like 22 years ago, something happened. If you remember that. Okay, so let's begin. 
Um, today we start the new section or unit, as you may prefer to call it. It's exploring new cities. And uh, we're going to go with lesson A, which is popular destinations. Okay. So that's unit three. Just uh, let's start. Okay, cities of the world. We're going to read first. This is like an introductory activity that we have uh, before we go into the rest of the material. So I want you to take a good look at this and uh, see, you have cities of the world, read about these cities, which city would you most like to, fit, to visit? And you have four cities. The first one is Barcelona, then you have Beijing, Sydney, and Seoul, okay, from Korea. So I'm going to need some volunteers to read them one by one. So who would like to help me read Barcelona's information? If you want to participate, just raise your hand, your virtual hand, and uh, you have an opportunity here. Gabriel Antonio, Najera, Martel, please help us read Barcelona's information. Yeah, um, Barcelona is famous for museums and seafood, and for the architect, Antoni Gaudi, who designed several of the city's most distinctive buildings. The restaurants here, they open until midnight when many locals are still enjoying dinner. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. Barcelona is famous for museums and seafood and for the architect, Anthony Gaudí, who designed several of the city's most distinctive buildings. The restaurants here stay open until midnight when many locals are still enjoying dinner. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay. The second one, Beijing. Who can help us read Beijing's information? Please. If you want to participate, just raise your hand and uh, Biden. Okay, Biden, let's do this. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Beijing has many popular tourist attractions. Attractions. Which include attractions. I'm sorry. Which okay. include the Great Wall of China, the Summer Palace, and the Forbidden city. Forbidden. Tourists who forbidden. Sorry, forbidden. Tourists yeah. who tourists who come here for the first time are amazed by the crowds, the best streets, and the constantly changing skyline. Yeah, Beijing has many popular tourist attractions, which include the, the Great Wall of China, the Summer Palace and the Forbidden City. Tourists who come here for the first time are amazed by the crowds, the busy streets, and the constantly changing skyline. There you go, that's Beijing, okay? We're gonna read the next part. Sydney, volunteer, please, to help me read this part. Rufino, thank you, Rufino. Okay, so the, the place where most tourists go first in Sydney is the famous Opera House. But this Australian city also has great restaurants and museums. The spring and fall are the season when most people come to visit. Thank you, Rufino. The place where most tourists first go in Sydney is the famous Opera House. But this Australian city also has great restaurants and museums. The spring and fall are the seasons when most people come to visit. Okay, so that's Sydney's information. And finally, we have uh, this, Seoul, okay, Korea. Who wants to read this, please? Seoul, okay. Only the boys uh, are participating today, okay. Good well, evening. Good evening, okay. Well, what happened can you to hear the me? ladies? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, what is okay. the name of the place? Soul. 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 Okay. It's like, like the soul. Okay, I'm going to start. Uh, soul is well known for its spicy food and its shopping areas where you can find everything from antique pottery to custom made chlorine. The, I don't know, me, Myeongdong, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> the the Yeongdong uh -huh. area has dozens of shops that sell the La latest fashions. The latest fashions. Okay. Yeah. Seoul is well known for its spicy food and its shopping areas where you can find everything from antique pottery to custom made clothing. 
the Myeongdong area has dozens of shops that sell the latest fashions. So that's information from Seoul in Korea. So what are we going to do here? Okay. Um, first of all, we have this part, but I guess just let me, I believe I forgot one very, very important detail here. <laughs> It's just the track, the, the audio file. Well, before that, okay, we have uh, um, the four pieces of information. So what I want you to do is I want you to um, tell me if you have questions about the vocabulary or anything else in there. You have questions about the vocabulary? Any questions? Elizabeth. What does um, pottery? pottery? Pottery, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can do pottery with clay, which is something that you get from the ground and then people make you know, like jars and other things. Okay, usually on a spinning tool goes around and around and around you get some water in your hands and then you start like creating something like a vase and then you put flowers on it and things uh-huh that's pottery okay there you go that's pottery. Thank you. you're welcome okay so um any other questions about the about the vocabulary no questions All right, uh, Elizabeth, no? Yes. Okay. Uh, what does dozens mean? Dozens. A dozen is uh, 12 units. That's a dozen. Like if you have a dozen eggs, that's 12 eggs. So dozens is a way to say that many. Uh, where is it? Where did you find it? Which ones? Barcelona, Sydney, Seoul, or Beijing? I can't find it. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's in Seoul. Dozens of shops that sell the latest fashions. That means a lot of shops, okay? That's a way of saying that there are many shops right there. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other questions about the vocabulary from the reading? No more? Okay, then, ah, Gabriela. Yes, sorry. I don't remember how to pronounce forbidden or forbidden. It's forbidden. Thank you. Forbidden. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's it's forbidden. Okay. So, um you're welcome. Um sorry, you said you said thank you and I forgot to say you're welcome. So, I'm saying it now. You're welcome. Um any other questions about the vocabulary? Is everything clear? If so, we're moving on to the next part. Okay, so uh, here we go. So it's so the lesson objective, okay? There was an activity right there, but I forgot that I don't have the audio file, so. Okay, silly me, sorry about that. So lesson objective 3.0. By the end of this lesson, participants will know how to identify and use relative and non-relative uh, clauses, okay? It's actually defining and non-defining relative clauses, but okay, there's a something here I'm going to correct to use defining and non-defining relative clauses. Okay, there's some there's just a typo in here. Okay, that's more like it. By the end of this lesson, participant will know how to identify and use defining and non-defining relative clauses. Uh, this is a mistake from the platform. So here we go, defining and non-defining relative clauses. It's a lot of information right here, but we're going to tackle this little by little, so don't worry about it. So all the information you can find here is in the book, well, in the manual, okay, that you have except the two points uh, below. So I'm going to send this to you via WhatsApp right now so all of you can have it and study it, okay?
All right, just give me a second as I do that. There it is. Okay, I just sent it to you via WhatsApp. Now you all have this information, but we're going to go all over it uh, together. So uh, let's take a look. A defining relative clause defines or gives essential information about a noun. The Myeongdong area has dozens of shops that sell the latest fashions or the spring and fall are the seasons when most people come to visit. Okay, so what's next? A non-defining relative clause gives optional information about a noun and cannot begin with the pronoun that. Notice the use of commas. The restaurants here stay open until midnight when many locals are still enjoying dinner. Beijing has many popular tourist attractions which include the Great Wall of China. Now, that, the relative pronoun that, can be used for people or things in defining relative classes. However, it cannot be used as a replacement for where. Many of the people that live in Paris leave the city in August to vacation in other places. A statue of dogs that can be found in Boston is a popular tourist attraction for children. And Pamplona is the city in Spain where the balls run through the streets during a summer festival. Now, that cannot be used in non-defined in relative clauses. Who, which, or where are used instead. Cairo, which has fascinated Europeans for ages, draws countless European tourists each year. Our tour guide, who knew a great deal about souvenirs from the area, helped us to buy some beautiful presents to our friends. Now, this may sound confusing, and I know that it's a lot of information. So, um, as usual, I have some extra information in which I explain it uh, at, at a better pace. So don't worry if it sounds uh, confusing right now. If you say like, what am I looking at? Don't worry right now. I'm going to just dissect it for you. So this is extra information. This is not in the material. So everybody uh, pay close attention to it. So defining relative clauses. That's the first thing that we have to understand what defining relative clauses are. So Take a good look. You have clauses with who, that, and which. So study this example situation. Last week, we had a party and a lot of people came. Everybody enjoyed it. Okay, you have two sentences right there. Okay, the first one is, last week, everybody, we had a party, sorry, and a lot of people came. That's sentence number one. And sentence number two will be, uh, everybody enjoyed it. You have two sentences. Now, you can combine the two sentences into one if you use a relative clause. And what does the new sentence look like? You have this. Everybody who came to the party enjoyed it. And now you have combined the information from the two sentences into one by using a relative clause. Now, what is a re well? Before we even begin to say what a relative clause is, we have to understand what a clause is. A clause is a part of a sentence, okay? A relative clause tells us which person or thing or what kind of person or thing the speaker means. For example, the woman who lives next door to me. Now, who lives next door to me is the relative clause and it is telling us which woman, okay? Imagine that I say, imagine that I come here and I tell you, hey, everybody, listen. What? The woman is a doctor. Is that a complete sentence? The answer is yes. Does it carry a complete meaning? The answer is yes. We know that the woman is a doctor. But you will probably ask me, teacher, who are you talking about? What woman? Who's that person you're mentioning right now? So I need to give you some extra, well, I need to give you more information for you to understand the whole idea, for you to understand what I'm referring to. So I say, the woman who lives next door to me is a doctor, okay? Now it makes much more sense because you know what woman or which woman I am referring to, okay? The second one. People who complain all the time. Imagine that I come and I say, I hate people. And you say like, oh my God, teacher, what's wrong with you? 
okay, it's like I need to, you know, specify. Then I say, I hate people who complain all the time. Oh, okay, that's better. I mean, I sh you shouldn't hate people anyway, but okay, at least the sentence makes more sense now. So when I say who complain all the time, I am telling you specifically what kind of people I don't like, okay? I use the word I hate, okay, so forget about it. I'm going to say, I don't like people who complain all the time. That sounds much more positive. So um, again, who complain all the time is a relative clause and it tells us what kind of people. I'm going to send this information to you via WhatsApp right now. That way everybody can have it and study it. Um, I'm seeing here in the group that some of you are having trouble connecting to the meeting because there is rain apparently, like bad weather. It's There isn't any bad weather here, but probably there will be later, okay. Well, I'm sorry about it. Good thing that these classes are always uh, available for you later, okay. So uh, there's no way you can miss them. At least there's no way you can miss the information. Okay, before we continue, this is like a, a very quick introduction to uh, com uh, defining relative clauses. So uh, do you have any questions about the first slide? Anything that is not clear so far? No? I'll interpret your silence as a no. <laughs> no, teacher. Okay, everything is good. All right, let's continue. So everybody who came to the party, that's a relative clause. Okay, now, second part, we use who in the relative clause for people, not things, okay? You say, for example, the woman who lives next door to me is a doctor. Who means the woman, okay? So who lives next door to me is the relative clause, all right? It begins with the relative pronoun who. Who refers to a person, and that person is the woman. If I omit the relative clause and I just say the woman is a doctor, again, we uh, have the same problem that I mentioned before. You will ask me, what woman? Who are, you talk who are you talking about? So the answer is the woman who lives next door to me. And you say, ah, that woman. Okay, she's a doctor. Okay, cool. Thanks for the information. So um, uh, second example, I don't like people who complain all the time. Again, if I only say I don't like people, you will say like, wow, it's, you hate everybody, teacher? No, 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 I don't. I just say, I don't like people who complain all the time, okay? That's the kind of people I don't like. So who refers to the people, okay? And this uh, relative clause gives you essential or very important information for you to understand the whole of the sentence. So an architect is someone who designs buildings, okay? Imagine I just come and tell you, an architect an architect is someone, okay? <laughs> you will tell me like, okay, well, thanks. You already knew that. But uh, if I say an architect is someone who designs buildings. Now, who designs buildings is the relative clause because it's telling you what kind of person an architect is or what kind of profession he or she has. Okay, so an architect is someone who designs building who, again, refers to someone, who refers to a person or a group of people. So uh, you begin a relative clause with who, okay, when you are referring to people. What was the name of the person who called? Okay, again, if I only come and ask you, what was the name of the person? You will ask me, which person? Who are you talking about? But then I say, what was the name of the person who called? Ah, that person, the person who called. Who is the person again? So who called is the relative clause. Do you know anyone who wants to buy a car? Again, if I just come and say, do you know anyone? You say like, yes, teacher, I know a lot of people. Okay. But then I say, do you know anyone who wants to buy a car? Ah, okay, now that's different. That's much more specific. So who, again, refers to anyone, people. Now, we use that for people, but not which. Pay close attention. This is important. The woman that lives next door to me is a doctor. So you can use who, or that when you refer to people. It's, sorry, uh, okay. It's uh, it's optional, really, okay? That refers to the woman. Now, if you notice, 
this is the same first example. The woman who lives next door to me is a doctor. I can also say the woman that lives next door to me is a doctor. Which one is correct? The answer is both are correct. You can use either form. You can say that lives next door to me or who lives next door to me. Both forms are good. So remember this. If you want to refer to people, you can use who and you can use that. Okay? You choose right there. Who or that? Now, be careful. For people, you don't use which. Okay? Never use which for people. You don't say the woman which lives next door to me is a doctor. That will be incorrect. Okay? That will be absolutely incorrect. So never use it. Before we continue, do you have any questions about the information in this slide? Give a lot of examples here. And I'm sorry that I keep asking, but I just want to make sure uh, this is understood because it's a long, it's a long topic, okay, that we have to study today. So um, any questions about this? Is, is it is it clear? It is clear. Okay, okay. I, I see from your faces it is clear. <laughs> All right. Uh, you don't talk much today, people. <laughs> Defining relative clauses. Okay, next part. Uh, clauses with who, that, and which. Okay. Now, when we're talking about things, we use that or we use which, but never who. Okay. So you say, I, I say, I don't like stories that have unhappy endings, or I don't like stories which have unhappy endings. Again, if I only say, I don't like stories, you'll say like, so no stories at all? No, no, I don't like stories that have unhappy endings. Ah, that specific kind of story, okay? You can use that or which. Then uh, you have this, Grace War. Let me correct something here that I believe is not right. Yes, okay. Okay, sorry. Okay, um, Grace works for a company that makes furniture or Grace works for a company which makes furniture. Both forms are correct. But again, the relative clause provides essential information for you to understand the whole idea. If I only say Grace works for a company, that's a full sentence and people understand. Okay, yeah, Grace works for a company, but that's not very specific. I also work for a company. You work for a company, right? So uh, the thing is, what kind of company? You say Grace works for a company that makes furniture. Okay, now that's more specific. Now we know what kind of company Grace works for. Okay, so that completes the idea. And uh, the machine that broke down is working again now, or the machine which broke down is working again now. So when I say that broke down, I am being specific on what machine I'm talking about, okay? Now, uh, as you can see, a relative clause can be at the end of the sentence or it can be in the middle of the sentence, as uh, the example here. The machine, I'm going to make another correction. Okay, sorry. Okay, the machine that broke down or the machine which broke down, that's a relative clause, is working again now. So when I say that or which, that's the machine. But again, I want you to notice that relative clauses can come or can go, I'm sorry, at the end of the sentence or in the middle of the sentence, okay? All right, so what is what is uh, the takeaway here? Who is for people, which is for thing, and that is for people and things, okay? So um, in a relative clause, we use who, that, and which. We don't use he, she, or it, okay? That's a very important thing you don't repeat uh, the person or the thing that you mentioned before. Instead, you're going to use a pronoun, but not a subject pronoun like he, she, it. You're going to use a relative pronoun. And those relative pronouns are who, that, and which. Example, I met a Canadian woman at the party. Sentence number one, she is an English teacher. Sentence number two, you have two sentences right there. If you want to combine the two sentences into one, then you can say this. I met a Canadian woman at the party who 
is an English teacher. So who is a pronoun that is substitute the subject pronoun she. You don't need to use she again because now you're using who. Who is a pronoun. So when I say who, I refer to the lady. Okay, it's the same as the pronoun she. Second example, I can't find the keys. That's the first sentence. Second sentence, they were on the table. Now you have two sentences. If you want to combine them into one, you get something like this. I can't find the keys that were on the table. All right. Now, what is the relative pronoun? That. And the relative pronoun that is substituting the subject pronoun they. You don't need to say they again. Okay, because now you're using that. That refers to the keys. I'm going to send this to you now. Oops. <laughs> that was the wrong screen. This is the right one. Before we continue, do you have any questions? Any questions at all? No questions? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Okay, one more slide and uh, then a few exercises for you to practice, of course. Okay, so uh, one more. Clauses with when, where, and whose. This is a lot quicker. So other pronouns include when, where, and whose. Now, when refers, wow, this is the wrong order of animation. I apologize. Uh-huh. Okay. I get it. Give me a second. I'm going to fix this. Mm -hmm. This is the thing when you use PowerPoint. A lot of things can go wrong. Okay. All right. Now, again. Let's begin. Other pronouns include when, where, and who. So when refers to a time. Example, summer is the season when I'm happiest. When means the season. Where refers to a place. That's the stadium where Real Madrid plays. Okay, where is the stadium? Just a second. Just a moment, please. Okay. And whose refers to a person's belongings, okay? You say, he is a musician whose albums have sold millions. Whose means the musicians. That means his albums. In Spanish, what is whose? How do you say whose in Spanish? Do you know? Yeah. Sorry? Yes. No, not really. Yeah. It's yeah. more like cuyo, yeah. cuyas, cuyos, or cuyas. That's, that's the word. Cuyos albumes han, han vendido millones. Okay. So he's a musician whose albums have sold millions. That's it. That's the meaning of whose. I'm sending this to you via WhatsApp now, and then we're going to do the exercises. Oh my God, 834 already, wow. Never have enough time to explain grammar. Okay. All right, now that we know all this, okay, it's time for us to do exercises. This is your turn, take a look. What do these words mean? Choose from the box and write sentences with who. So you have an example. Relative uh, clauses are particularly important when you are giving definitions, especially a kid. For example, imagine a kid comes, a very young kid, and tells you, hey, dad, or hey, mom, what is an architect? So you have to provide a definition. And you say, an architect is someone who designs buildings. Ah. OK, now that's a definition. An architect is someone who designs buildings. So what about a customer? You have to say a customer is someone who, and then 
you tell me uh, the rest of the sentence. You have to choose from the box. So who wants to try number two? What is a customer? What's a customer? Gabriela. Teacher, I have a question. Sure. Um, if you're if you are using or making an um, question about a person, mm -hmm. you can use, for example, look that girl that uh, over there, and you ask me which girl. Mm -hmm. I can say which girl. Uh huh. You can say which girl or or which one. Okay. Also. Uh, do you do you say that uh, uh -huh. we can use people or persons? Ah uh, so no, but that no no, but that's that's a bit different, okay? Because you you're asking a question. In that case, which works as a question word, not as a not as a pronoun. I mean, okay. you can only use which. I mean, you can't use which a, as a pronoun for people as a relative pronoun. But in a question, as a question word, you can use it. You can say which person, which thing, which kid, which architect, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In that case, it is possible. So we can use which instead of she, he, mm, right? Well, you can use which in a relative clause instead of it, but not instead of he or she, because he or okay. she are people. In that case, you will have to use who. Or that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, number two, you have a customer. So what's a customer, Gabriel? And a customer the... is someone who buys something from a shop. A customer is someone who buys something from a from a shop. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So you have that. A customer is someone, and then the relative clause, who buys something from a shop. Cool. Elizabeth, well, no, I don't know, because you were raising your hand, but I don't know, who wants to participate here? A burglar, what's a burglar? You cannot ask me what a burglar is, because if I tell you, I'll give you the answer. So what's a burglar? Who knows this? Who can tell me what a burglar is? Uh-huh. A thief? A burglar is a thief. That is true. Okay, a burglar is a thief. But um, uh, um, uh, in a definition format, using the the information that you have uh, in the yellow box, what can you say? Because in this list, there are there are there are two thieves. Okay, Anna Cecilia. Uh, burglar is someone who is still from a shop? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> that's that's a different kind of thief, okay? Now, a burglar is a thief, just as Gabriela said, but not that kind of thief. That's another one. We have it uh, in the list. But you get a second opportunity, Ana Cecilia. If it's not, if a burglar is not someone who steals from a shop, then what's a burglar? I don't know, teacher. Okay, no problem. But thank you for participating. Elisa Arely, uh, can you tell us? Yeah. A burglar is someone who breaks into a house to steal things. A burglar is someone who breaks into a house to steal things. Usually when people are not in the house, they observe you, right? And they say like, okay, this is the moment. They break into your house, they enter and they steal your things and then they leave. They can also do it at night. Okay, but it's... A bit more difficult. Um, I have been a victim twice. Can you imagine that? Have you ever been victims of burglars? Okay. I have been a victim twice. It's horrible. Wouldn't wish it on my worst for my worst enemy. Okay, that's it's, it's just horrible. But yeah, that's a burglar. Again, a burglar is a kind of thief. It's a person who breaks into a house to steal things. Okay. So what about number four? A coward. What's a coward? Who can tell me? Gabriela. Someone who is not brave. So a coward is someone who is not brave. Okay. Yeah, that's right. A coward is someone who is not brave. That's a coward. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Okay, that's correct. What about number five? A tenant. What's a tenant? What is a tenant? If you don't know the meaning, you can quickly look it up in the dictionary or on the internet, and then you can tell me the answer. No problem. Okay, so what's a tenant? Ana Cecilia, what's a tenant? A tenant is someone who pays rent to live somewhere. Yeah, a tenant is someone who pays rent to live somewhere. That's right. If you're living in a house that is not yours, you're paying rent to live in the house, then you're a tenant. Okay. Some vocabulary, by the way. Um, normally, in this kind of situation, there are two people. Okay. There is the tenant and is the landlord or landlady. So who's the landlord? The landlord is the owner of the house. Okay, that's the landlord. The landlady, in the case it's a lady, okay, it's the owner of the house. And the person who is living there and paying every month is the tenant, okay? So some vocabulary. All right, so what's next? A shoplifter, what's a shoplifter? Byron. A shoplifter is someone who steals from a shop. Now, yeah, that's a shoplifter. It's someone who steals from a shop. Some people go to shops and they put products in their pockets, okay, and they try to leave without paying. That's a shoplifter. It's like you see them in the, at the supermarket, you know, sometimes they take pictures of these people and they are in display <laughs> at the entrance of the supermarket. You have probably seen them. Rufino, what's a liar? Um, a liar. A liar is someone who who doesn't tell the truth. That is correct. A liar is someone who doesn't tell the truth. Okay, that's a liar. Is someone who doesn't tell the truth. Thank you, Amilcar. Thank you very much. And number eight, a pessimist. What's a pessimist? There's only one left. What is a pessimist? What is a pessimist? Nobody wants to give the answer. Okay, so a pessimist is someone who expects the worst to happen. That's a pessimist. Okay, so there's that. What time is it? 8.44, wow. Okay, next exercise. Um, now, you have to make one sentence from the two. You have to use who, that, or which, okay? So there's an example. A girl was injured in the accident. She is now in hospital. So the girl who was injured in the accident is now in hospital. So who was injured in the accident is the relative clause. Remember, if you're talking about a person, you have to use who. If you're talking about uh, things, you use which. And you can use that if you are not really sure if, whether you have to use who or which. So what about number two? A waiter served us. He was impolite and impatient. Who wants to try? Gabriel. Uh, the waiter who served us was impolite and impatient. The waiter who served us or the waiter that served us was impolite and impatient. That is correct. Thank you, Gabriel. Number three, a building was destroyed in the fire. It has now been rebuilt. Beginning with the, what's the new sentence? Using a relative clause. Gabriela. The building which was destroyed in the fire, it has now been rebuilt. Ha, ah, be careful. You cannot use the pronoun it again. We only say 
the building that or which was destroying the fire has now been rebuilt. The rest is correct. Thank you very much, Gabriela. So yeah, the building that or which was destroying the fire has now been rebuilt. Why is it that we don't use it? Because we are using that or which. That or which are pronouns that replace the subject pronoun it. So the building, again, that or which was destroying the fire has now been rebuilt. Very good, thank you, Gabriela. Number four, some people were arrested they have now been released. Who wants to try number four? Byron. The people who were arrested have now been released. Released, okay, yeah. The people who were arrested or yes. the people that were arrested have now been released. Thank you very much, that is correct. And number five, a bus goes to the airport. It runs every half hour. Try to participate, people. I only have like the same six people participating all the time. How about the rest? I want to hear the rest too. So a bus goes to the airport. It runs every half hour. So who knows? wants to give it a try. If, uh, I mean, if you try and you don't get the right answer, well, um, uh, we're going to, uh, eventually we're going to get to the right answer and everybody's going to learn. So don't worry about making mistakes. Of course, try not to make mistakes, but if you make a mistake, it's okay, we're human. We sometimes forget and we sometimes uh, don't get the right answer. So Rufino. I try. Okay. Well, well there. Okay, good. Um, That's the attitude. Um, the bus, uh, the bus, uh, which, the bus which uh, goes to the airport, who, uh, no, mm -mm. Uh, no, the bus, the, the bus, que me trajo la carreta. So, okay, the, the, the first part was the, good, right? The bus which goes to the airport. Uh, the bus which go to the airport uh, that runs every, every half hour. Okay, there's a problem right there that you're using uh, basically two relative clauses in one sentence and only one is necessary. So ah, okay. uh, th the first part is good. When you told me the bus, which goes to the airport, up to that point is good. Okay, you have the relative clause, the bus that goes to the airport, and then you have to complete it with the rest of the idea. Uh -huh. But something is, something is, uh, we have to fix something right there. So um, who can help us here? Who can help us complete this? Who can? It can help me. Okay. okay. Who, who, who wants to give uh, Rufino a helping hand? Anybody can participate. Come on. Elmer. Uh, the bus uh, which goes to the airport rooms every half hour. That's correct. The bus that goes to the airport or the bus which goes to the airport runs every half hour. El bus que va al aeropuerto pasa cada media hora. Okay, yeah. Okay, you see, I mean, uh, even if we don't get the right answer at the beginning, eventually together we can we can get there, okay, which is, is important. So everybody who has participated in this, uh, thank you very much. And, and those who have been paying attention also, thank you very much. So um, let us continue. Now, uh, your turn, choose the correct option, okay? So you tell me, that's the hospital when I was born, where I was born, who I was born, or whose I was born, which one is the right, uh, where to complete the relative uh, clause? If you know, raise your hand, please. You have to choose the answer. Christina. Uh, that's the hospital where I was born. That's the hospital where I was born. That is correct. Thank you, Christina. Number two, 
The week when, where, whose, or whose they were in Edinburgh was lovely and sunny. Byron. It's when. Okay, yeah, that's correct. The week when they were in Edinburgh was lovely and sunny because we're talking about a week. We're talking about a period of time. So, yeah, it is when. Thank you, Byron. That is correct. Number three, the doctor when, where, who, or whose I usually see doesn't work there anymore. How about this one? Who wants to try? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Anna Cecilia. Who? Uh, who? Yeah, the doctor who I usually see doesn't work there anymore. Thank you. That is correct. Number four, that's the lady when, where, who, who's bought my old car. How about this one? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Let's participate. Rufino. Who? Who? That's the lady who bought my old car. Yeah, that's right, because we're referring to a lady. Thank you. Number five, he called a plumber that who or whose he found online. Gabriel. That. Okay, yeah, that's right. It's actually that or who, okay, in this case. So, yeah, correct. Uh, he called a plumber that he found online or he called a plumber who he found online. Good. And number six, the passengers that were who or whose flights were canceled got a refund. How about this one right here? Who knows the answer? What word should we use to complete the sentence? Rufino. Who's? Who's the last one? Uh -huh. Who's the last that one? That is correct. Yes. The passengers whose flights were canceled got a refund. Los pasajeros cuyos vuelos fueron cancelados se les dio un reembolso. Right? Yeah. That's right. Whose flights? Okay. Very good. All right. Great. Now, a key to recognize this usually when you use whose. It is always, it is followed by a noun, flights, whose flights, whose car, whose house, okay? That's a key, that's a key to, to, to knowing how to do this. Okay, very good, everybody. Thank you very much for participating. It's, uh, it's, it's great that you're participating this much. Okay, there's one more exercise, but I think we're gonna skip it here for the sake of time. And instead, we're going to jump into part two. Now, we know what defining relative clauses are. I just I just explained it to you. It's when you need the relative clause to understand the sentence, okay, the whole sentence. Now, we don't have much time. We basically just have six minutes. So uh, we're gonna try to study this and uh, we're going to continue tomorrow. But for the time being, everybody take a good look at this. So non-defining relative clauses. Look, there are two types of relative clause. This is extremely important right now. Type one, number one, defining relative clause, which is the same type of relative clause we've been studying the whole class today. So the lady who lives next door is a doctor. Grace works for a company that makes furniture. We stayed at the hotel that you recommended, okay? So again, if I just come and I tell you, the lady is a doctor, you will ask me, who? I mean, what lady are you talking about? And I say, the lady who lives next door. Ah, that lady. So when I say who lives next door, that information is essential for you to understand what I'm talking about. I can, of course, I can say the, the doctor, sorry, the lady is a doctor, and that's a complete sentence. And you will understand, okay, the lady is a doctor. The problem is that you will not know who I'm referring to. And that's the problem right there. So that's why you need the relative clause because the relative clause is giving you essential or inf information that is absolutely necessary for you to understand the whole idea of what I'm talking about. The second one I say, I can say Grace works for a company, but you will say like, okay, yeah, me too. I also work for a company, okay? But if I say Grace works for a company that makes furniture, okay, now I make it more specific 
and you will get a better idea of what I'm talking about. It's not just any company. We're talking about a company that makes furniture. Okay. And the third one is we stayed at the hotel. If I only say we stayed at the hotel, you will say, um, okay, what hotel? Okay. Then I say, we stayed at the hotel that you recommended. Ah, that hotel. So that you recommended again is a relative clause that is giving you essential information. So in these examples, the relative clauses tell you which person or thing or what kind of person or thing the speaker means. When you say the lady who lives next door tells us which lady. A company that makes furniture tells us what kind of company. The hotel that you recommended tells us which hotel. So these are called defining relative clauses. Again, defining relative clauses give you information that is necessary for the other person to understand what you're talking about. Now, look at this. Never use commas with these clauses. Okay? No commas when you have a defining relative clause. But let's take a look at the other type of relative clause. Type number two, non-defining relative clauses. Now, take a look. James, who lives in London, is an architect. Okay. Now, if I say James is an architect, imagine that I tell you I have a friend, his name is James, and James is an architect. Okay. You will understand if I tell you James is an architect. That's a complete idea right there and the meaning is also quite complete so when i say james comma who lives in london comma is an architect the thing changes a little bit right here because you have a relative clause but the relative clause is giving you only extra information you don't need this to understand the idea if you eliminate the relative clause you will still understand if i only say james is an architect you say okay good for James. Now I say James, who lives in London, is an architect. Now, who lives in London is giving you extra information about James, but it's not necessary for you to understand the whole idea. Second example, Anna told me about her new job. Now, if I tell you this, imagine that we have a friend in common and her name is Anna. I tell you, Anna told me about her new job. That's a whole idea. You will understand, you know who Anna is and you know that she has a new job. But what happens if I say, Anna told me about her new job, which she's enjoying a lot. Now, which she's enjoying a lot is a relative clause, but it's not giving you essential information. It's giving you extra information. If you take it off the sentence or take it out of the sentence, I'm sorry, um, you, you still understand what I'm talking about. The third one, we stayed at the Park Hotel, which a friend of ours, a friend, oh, by the way, sorry, mistaking here, should be a friend of ours recommended. Okay, sorry. So we stayed at the Park Hotel, which a friend of ours, mm, okay, better, a friend of ours recommended. So again, if I only say we stayed at the Park Hotel and I don't mention the relative clause, you will understand, no problem. Now, in these examples, the relative clauses do not tell you which person or thing the speaker means. We already know which thing or person is meant. James, we know James. Anna's new job, you know about Anna's new job and the Park Hotel. Now, the relative clauses in these sentences give us extra information about the third person or thing. The information is not essential, it's extra. So if we have it, Okay, that's good. But if we don't have it, we still understand. No problem. The relative clauses in these sentences are called non-defining relative clauses. And you should always use commas with these clauses. Let's go back. James, comma, who lives in London, comma, is an architect. Anna told me about her new job, comma, which she's enjoying a lot. And we stayed at the Park Hotel, comma, which a friend of ours recommended. So again, in short, defining relative clauses give you essential information for you to understand the whole sentence. No commas needed. Non-defining relative clauses give you extra information about what you're referring to. 
commas are necessary. We're about to finish the class, but first I'm going to send this to you via WhatsApp so you can have it and study it. Just, uh, where is it? Okay, here. Okay, um, before we finish, do you have any questions about this slide right here? No questions? Was it a bit overwhelming? No, no questions? Okay. Okay, then. No, no to... questions. Okay, cool. I'm just going to call attendance one more time. Okay, so if you're here, let me know. Juan Eduardo Moran Rodriguez. Is Juan Eduardo Moran Rodriguez connected? Juan Eduardo Moran Rodriguez. No? Okay. Madeline Diana Serón de Paz. Is Madeline here? Madeline Diana Serón de Paz. No? Okay. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. I'm here. Okay, welcome, Wendy. Okay, everybody, uh, please study this. Okay, tomorrow we're going to uh, study a little bit more information. You have, and also we're going to do some exercises. Teacher, so, sorry, yes. teacher. Yes, Carlos. Carlos Dominguez present. Yes, uh, your attendance has been taken. Thank you okay, very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, everybody, uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you for participating. And uh, don't miss the class tomorrow because I'm going to give you some really, really, really important information about how to distinguish defining from non defining relative clauses. So thank you and good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. See you bye tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night, teacher. Good night.